I want to say a few words to you, Mr. President, to you, Mr. President and to our wonderful friends at APAC. Wonderful friends at APAC. Thank you for standing with Israel at all times, and especially during these trying times. Thank you, APAC. Thank you, APAC. I deeply appreciate the support we've received from President Biden and the administration, and I hope it will continue. But let me be clear. But let me be clear. Israel will win this war no matter what. To win this war, we must destroy the remaining Hamas battalions in Rafah. If not, if not, Hamas will regroup, rearm, and reconquer Gaza, and then we're back to square one. And that's an intolerable threat that we cannot accept. We will destroy Hamas, free our hostages, and ensure that Gaza doesn't ever pose a threat to Israel again. We will finish the job in Rafah while enabling the civilian population to get out of harm's way. We've taken measures to minimize civilian casualties that no other army has taken in history. Just ask Colonel John Spencer, a world expert on urban warfare, in charge of urban warfare in West Point. We have taken measures to minimize civilian casualties that no other army has taken in history. So to our friends in the international community, I say this. You cannot say you support Israel's right to, ex to exist and to defend itself, and then oppose Israel when it exercises that right. You cannot say you cannot say you support Israel's goal of destroying Hamas and then oppose Israel when it takes the actions necessary to achieve that goal. You cannot say that you oppose Hamas's strategy of using civilians as human shields and then blame Israel for the civilian casualties that result from this Hamas cynical strategy. For Israel, every civilian death is a tragedy. For Hamas, every civilian death is a strategy. So it is wrong and immoral to hold Israel to a standard for avoiding civilian casualties that no other country on earth has held to. My friends, I want to assure you, None of these pressures will stop us. Israel's very future, its very survival is at stake. We have no other option but total victory. And that victory is in and within reach. I know that the overwhelming majority of the American people stand with us. I know that the overwhelming majority of Congress stands with us. I know that you stand with us. I know that you're working tirelessly, day in, day out, to get us the tools so we can finish the job faster. And on behalf of the United People of Israel, I want to say thank you, APAC. Thank you for everything you're doing for Israel. God bless Israel. God bless America. Thank you. I'm using my uh, right of intervention in the beginning and at the end. I want to tell you something that will be, uh, you know, that is uh, defied by some people who would make you believe that the people of Israel are disunited. In fact, uh, some people would have you believe there's the prime minister and then there's the people of Israel. And the truth of the matter is that the people of Israel overwhelmingly support the policies set forth 
by myself and my government. They want, they overwhelmingly support the need for total victory, overwhelmingly. They uh, overwhelmingly oppose the idea of having a Palestinian uh, state ram down our throat, and we've just uh, had uh, a vote in the Knesset to illustrate the point I just made, 99 to 9 supporting this, uh, this position. And you know what? It's not uh, irrational. It's because they think that giving now a Palestinian state after the October 7th massacre will be the greatest reward for terrorism uh, in modern times. They overwhelmingly uh, reject the idea that we should implant, after we destroy Hamas in Gaza, uh, the PA that still inculcates its children uh, towards terrorism and the annihilation of Israel. So they want a future of peace, a future of security that is purchased by a resounding victory. And as I say, the possibilities for this victory, the possibilities that are opened up are immense, but they require that one word, victory, and I'll repeat it again, victory, victory, victory. No substitute for that, and we will achieve it together. Thank you, APEC. Thank you. Thank you, Prime Minister. Our hearts are with you and the people of Israel. We wish you incredible luck with finishing the goal and in returning the hostages. So thank you so much for being with us. This concludes the inaugural APAC Summit. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. We'll see you very shortly on Capitol Hill, and we look forward to welcoming you back to Washington, D.C. next year. Thank you, Prime Minister. See you next week. Thank you.